I love Brockhampton. If you haven't already heard of them, they're a boy band, or at least self-proclaimed as one. No, we are no, a boy no, no, band. We are a boy you band. are a boy band. Ain't no self-proclaimed. It might be more accurate to describe them as a hip-hop collective, similar to that of Odd Future. I say hip-hop collective, but that might also be inaccurate. You see, it's hard to put Brockhampton into one box because they take from so many different genres. One might even consider them their own genre, a hodgepodge of influences masterfully weaved together. For example, they can equally excel on a hard rap track such as Heat and a softer melody like Rental. To be honest, an average listener probably wouldn't be able to recognize all these songs are from the same group. And that's the beauty of it. They're not tied down to one style. You never know what to expect from a Brockhampton song. Nothing is off the table because they're not afraid to push the boundaries of what's acceptable and safe. That's what makes them so exciting, so innovative, so refreshing. Add to that a number of extremely talented individuals and creative minds. It's a recipe for brilliance. Brockhampton had a meteoric rise to stardom in 2017 with the dropping of their Saturation Trilogy. Three critically acclaimed albums under their belt in a matter of a few months. This was no fluke, but instead well-deserved recognition of hard work. Every single song felt meticulously crafted where there were virtually no bad tracks. So yes, Brockhampton had a huge explosion in popularity in the past few months. With this rapid rise to success, a lot of people got to know the music, but not the people behind the Brockhampton name. The stories of this group are so diverse and they're not afraid to share them. With potentially a while before the release of their new album, The Best Years of Our Lives, let's take an in-depth look at the group, specifically the ringleader, Kevin Abstract. South side brought the wave back. Hair nappy need a wave kill. Same state where Trey at. The reason for the motherfucking ice cell. That's my nigga. Uh, my name is Kevin Abstract, and I want to be remembered for being awesome at everything I do, no matter what medium or whatever it is I decide to pick up on a random day, you know? I changed my mind. Actually, I don't change my mind no more. Changing your mind is for bitch-ass niggas, even though I just changed my mind right now. He was born as Clifford Ian Simpson on July 16, 1996 in Corpus Christi, a coastal city in South Texas. Never getting a chance to meet his father, Abstract was solely raised by his mother, a Mormon household where his family was very religious. However, he was not close with his family, even explaining in an interview that he had no idea what his mother did for a living. This lack of a family dynamic was especially hard on Abstract as he was dealing with his sexuality as well as his dreams of pursuing music, but had no one to confide in or relate to. Outside of his family, he remained an outsider. Abstract struggled with making friends as a result of his tough upbringing and his apprehension with his sexuality, something looked down upon in his community. Abstract had always known he was gay, but refused to come to terms with it in an attempt to fit in. This repression made his childhood pretty rough. While living in Corpus Christi, Abstract ultimately felt isolated. It didn't help that he couldn't find people who had the same interests and vision as him. Whenever he tried to break from the mold, he was shut down and ostracized. People thought of Abstract as weird for liking certain music and dressing a certain way. As a result, he had difficulties being himself and felt forced to blend in. Abstract would later move from the conservative community of Corpus Christi three and a half hours northeastward to the Woodlands. This was a good change as the Woodlands was a much more accepting environment. Although Abstract still felt like an outsider, being black in a predominantly white neighborhood, he appreciated having an outside perspective. Abstract described it as typical American suburbia, yet there was also something alluring and exciting about it. This is where, at the age of 11, Abstract began producing music. He 
got into rapping through an unlikely inspiration. Will Smith. Abstract loved to watch movies growing up, with his favorite movie being Hancock. He explained how, in the fourth grade, he saw Will Smith be the first rapper to win a Grammy on TV. Add that Abstract saw him as a father figure in place of his actual absent father. He wanted to follow in the footsteps of his role model and give rapping a shot. His other influences growing up included Kanye West, Future, Frank Ocean, Kid Cudi, and Tyler the Creator, to name a few. Three artists that I've seen that have motivated me or impacted my life in some, some way or another immediately have been Kanye West, Tupac, um, and Jesus Christ. These were people that were changing the landscape of hip-hop and showing Abstract that he could do this too. 808s and Heartbreak, Man on the Moon, The End of the Day, Goblin. Albums that showed a different side to hip-hop. An infusion of more melodic sounds and experimentation. Deeper, more vulnerable lyrics. Abstract saw that hip-hop could be an effective form of self-expression, a raw display of emotion. Being authentic was cool. At the age of 12, Ian Simpson created the name Kevin Abstract. After the first name of a kid Simpson thought was cool, along with his friend describing his music as abstract. With his newfound title, he began posting songs online on MySpace and other online forums. They gained some traction and momentum, which pushed abstract to keep going. At 15, he ran away from home to live with his sister in Georgia. He was now going to a new school, but instead of feeling like an outsider, classmates were impressed with his music and provided even more motivation for abstract to pursue music. This confidence led Abstract to make the decision to not attend college, but instead dive into his craft full-time. His parents were completely against the idea and left their son on his own financially. However, Abstract would not be going into this alone. In high school, he established relationships with like-minded individuals online who also had a passion for music. He posted on the hip-hop forum, Kanye to the calling for people with the same drive and dedication for music as himself. Here, Abstract formed the band Alive Since Forever, a group that was active for a few years but would eventually evolve into Brockhampton. At 17, Abstract and his online friends met up and eventually moved to San Marcos, Texas together. Between three apartments, they all tirelessly worked for a year, getting much better at making music. After a year of grinding and practice, the guys moved to L.A. and released their first collective mixtape under the Brockhampton name, All American Trash. Abstract also came out with his own material along the way, including critically acclaimed albums MTV 1984 in 2014 and American Boyfriend, A Suburban Love Story in 2016. From then on, the momentum never stopped for Abstract. Brockhampton named their shared house in L.A. as the Brockhampton Factory, where they continued to get better at making music, eventually coming out with the Saturation Trilogy. Abstract in 2017 said he wanted to be a mix between a pop star and a rap star, a level of notoriety similar to Justin Bieber and Little Uzi Vert. He was to be something indescribable musically, never been done before. With three albums down and another on the way, there's nothing holding him back. Whether or not Kevin still dreams of becoming this bridge between genres, I believe you're definitely going to be hearing the name Kevin Abstract a whole lot more. Ooh.